He's still on the Yep. He was on the He wasn't in the accident. No. He witnessed. He knew there was something wrong with that car. Okay. I have him. I just. I mean. I'd like to call this meeting to order and we'll begin with the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Supervisor Hawthorne? Here. Councillor Edwards? He is on his way, but he was detained. An accident. Not. He wasn't in the accident, but... Okay. He's coming. Councillor Greco? Here. Councillor Haggerty? Here. Councillor Abbott? Here. Um, Deputy Supervisor Okonowski? Here. And Highway Superintendent is also He's detained. Excused. about a meeting or a motion rather to dispense with the readings of the minutes of the previous meetings. I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Any questions? You all both all of you have a chance to read them? No, I good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ruth, call the roll. Okay, uh Councillor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councillor Haggerty? Yes. Councillor Abbott? Yes. Okay. One announcement I would make is that we received our final equalization rate, which is 82%. Next year it will be 100%. Um, I had a notice from the town of Lysander that they are holding a public hearing at the Lysander Town Hall at 6 Lock Street in Baldwinsville on August 26th at 7.30 to consider a local law amending their zoning law for the town of Lysander. Uh, first of all, to add dimensional requirements to make other ch and make other changes to the district regulations for flowage easement zoning district along the Seneca River and the New York State Barge Canal. And number two, to clarify the definition of lot width and to hear all persons interested in the subject. Answer. Yes. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that on? Well, no. it's on. Okay. Sorry. <coughs> we had our uh, Pafumi extinguisher came and did a fire alarm, fire alarm ex inspection and uh, cleaning of all our system, and that came out very well. The uh, the Fumi extinguisher is inspected and tested. The fire alarm system found all components in proper working order. We have them come once a year, at least, unless there's some other special problem. Um, the only item in new business I have, I'm kind of sorry Dave isn't here, because I know he was at the meeting, but... I want to do it a little bit later. There it is. Um, a letter from the codes office. They're still trying to get this. Uh, they're finding things about the fee schedule that they want to get better. Um, come to our attention, the fee schedule for sheds is unfair and needs to be revised. We would like to charge strictly by the square foot of non-habitable. Because at present it is cheaper to build a large, it can be cheaper to build a large shed than a small one. Flat fee as it stands now is $30 for a shed up to 14 by 14 or 196 square feet. Sheds larger than that are charged 10 cents a square foot non-habitable space. So the 14 by 14 would cost $30 where a 16 by 16 could cost $25.56. So they want to rectify that inequity which is understandable. I think that was unforeseen. 
I have no problem with that. So what do they want to have to They do? would like to just do it strictly by the square footage. And then if you have a small shed, it will be just a few dollars, six, seven dollars, perhaps ten dollars. So it'd be an eight by ten. Ten cents a foot. Something. Yeah. So we're going to be all the same regardless of size. That's what they're trying to straighten out. No, it's no. not the same fee. I mean, the, no, I mean the price per square yeah. foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The eight by ten is one going to be one whatever that square footage is and twelve by twelve and so on. Times ten cents. Times ten cents. Gotcha. Okay. Personally, I think we need to sit down in the codes office. I have a problem with these little sheds, even you know, being having to get a permit. They're prefabricated. Um, they just sit on the, you know, they can take them with you if you move. So I think we need to talk about that, but we could talk about that another day. In the meantime, I guess we ought to straighten this out because this is something that they come up with from time to time. It must have changed it. Back when I got my shit, it, it just fell within the, the guidelines. I didn't have to even have a That's what in. I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We used to not charge for the smaller sheds. Right. And I, I'm thinking we should revisit that issue and maybe have some standard there. Yeah, but right now. But for now. We're going to make it across the board, whether it's small or large. All yeah. the way. OK. Mm -hmm. do, you, do we have to do it now, or could we research it? Oh, I don't see. You know, you understand it. Yeah. Well, Let's I do know. it. Okay. And then, uh, like I say, we can have some more discussion about, you know, whether there should be a minimum size shed and so forth that would require a permit. But in the meantime, let's correct this inequity that can happen. I don't know that it has happened, but it could happen. Okay. Okay. Do you need a motion to that? I'll make a motion to go into the 10 cent per square foot. Okay. Second to that? I'll okay. second it, Jack. Okay. Ruth, do you call the roll? Council Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Council Haggerty? Yes. Council Abbott? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tony legislators. I saw at least one. <laughs> Meetings in Pulaski, I just let everybody know if anybody wants to come to the Tiff Courthouse. Two that afternoon or evening? Two o'clock. Two o'clock. Yep. Uh, last month's session, we uh, passed a resolution that worked out to the benefit of the town of Granby. Uh, it was on, it was how they uh, actually collected compensation rates from the municipalities. Last year, the actual cost to Granby. According to the sheet, was $63,741, $63,741. This year, the estimated cost is going to be $8,600. It's going to be a saving over $55,000 for our town. That's a nice head, I thought. That's very nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's going to be a real quiet session this uh, tomorrow. I don't see anything coming. There is going to be a meeting Friday from the steering committee. I don't know if you've all heard about a steering committee that Russ Johnson put together to see how we could improve the performance of government and lower taxes. And I went to some infrastructure meetings and they're going to suggest new management ways of running the airport and our solid waste. So that's going to be interesting to see what the, that, that direction is. Are there, there's several committees, aren't there? Yes, there is. Okay. Yeah. But the uh, steering committee is? That's the overseer of Oversee of yeah. those. Because yeah. I was invited to a workshop in Mexico in a couple of weeks. Yeah, for so, so was I. Yeah. Intermunicipal. I think you're on that committee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and we invite the public to show up. I mean, there are open meetings. Uh, every one of these meetings are open to the public and open to the press. I mean, it, it's, we've had a lot of good ideas, uh, some positive direction, positive input. I'm very excited to see what's going to happen. Seems like a good idea. Yep, and uh, it's a pretty quiet summer month, I guess, so unless there's any questions, it's... Mike, why did they uh, remove the downsizing resolution from the meeting tomorrow? I haven't heard that they was ever on the agenda for tomorrow. It wasn't on the previous agenda. I saw it that was mailed two weeks ago. It was never on it. Is that uh, still in the works, or are they thinking of dumping?
them from that because uh, they're afraid to lose some of their members. I don't believe I've been to any of the meetings they discussed it. I don't know. I can't give you any accurate information. I, I, and that was probably general government was talking about that, and I'm not on that committee. Uh, unless it comes to the floor, I wouldn't let or I visit one of the committee. Uh, that would be uh, Jimmy Bryant's committee. He's the chairman there. But I haven't. Uh, he had, his meetings are Mondays, and they're tough for me to get to them. But I haven't heard any news that it's, it was ever on it or it's been dumped. I don't, to my knowledge, think that it's been killed or anything. I just don't know if there's been some pressing things with the Michaud Nursing Home, uh, with this budget coming up, with this airport, uh, solid waste. I don't know if that was a top priority. So I, Do you know when, um, when the budget information will be given to the various committees? Uh, Steve was talking about that, I think, for end of this month or first part of next month. Uh, it's, it's getting close right now. It's from what I understand, what he told us. Um, it's, it's, it's not far off, though. It's not going to be as delayed as far as last year's was. And that we shouldn't be as nowhere as near as big a problem as last year's budget was. Have you been given any information as a legislator by, the, uh, by Russ Johnson or Steve Lyman as to why Oswego County was only given $60,000 from Homeland Security. All the counties around us were given 100 or more. And we have the three nuclear stations here in our county. That's, um, I haven't, I don't, you have no more numbers on it than I do then. Uh, well, this, was, pub this was published in the Post Standard, uh, approximately two and a half, maybe. Yeah, three. but I don't know what the surrounding counties got. Compared well, it was published in this paper, I believe. Uh, Cuyahoga County was over 100,000, I know that. Onondaga County was something like 185,000. They have no... Uh, but I don't know if you're looking at the total grants or just one of them. Because they, <laughs> the whole bank of security actually gives you grants to different, uh, through different committees. According to the paper, and they could have had it wrong. Oh, they, they, they very... Well, they could have had it wrong. wrong. According to the paper, <laughs> it was the grant given by Homeland Security, the total grant given by Homeland Security. Because these were supposedly all total. And as I said, they could have had it wrong. Oh. They get many things that are not exactly true to form. Uh, they've got a lot to report, I guess, so it's yeah. hard to get it all accurate. But uh, that's, again, that's general government. And those are the meetings. The one the meeting I really have a hard, I have a hard time attending. Because I know Russ attended that uh, special conference they had out of the state here. Uh, I think it was about like three days. Ago. I'll definitely ask tomorrow at our session if we got less than the surrounding counties. I want to know why. I mean, Senator Wright does a very good job of bringing money into our uh, county for us. Uh, he's very aggressive when it comes time to go out and get whatever's available. He's, he's done an excellent job. So if, if we're short, I'd like to know why. Yeah, and uh, one other question I ask is why city of Oswego's uh, cuts were, quite a bit of cuts were taken away from the city of Oswego for the school system by the, in the state uh, budget that they just uh, uh, come up with the other day, and, and the first session of it was, was the school budget. They, uh, they acknowledged that, and the city of Oswego got quite a sizable percentage cut, according, again, according to the paper, and they had them all in there. Um, Elmar Parish, Williamstown, Fulton, uh, Phoenix, Granby, you know. Uh, again, that's the state budget, and that's the city. And yeah, I know. <laughs> I haven't heard any Well, it's all, it, it all affects the county, no matter whether it's city or, or, or county or town or village or whatever, it all affects whatever the state gives to the school system eventually gets back to the taxpayer if it's not enough to make up the difference. In, in your school tax, that's not your county tax, yes. though. So no, it wouldn't no. affect your county tax. Right. But no. it's all part of the county tax package when it's all put together. Right. But that's the, the different line of the school versus county. But yes, I, I haven't heard <laughs> why Mr. Gozik received less than anyone else. I don't know. <laughs> I have a question. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, I appeared before the legislator uh, a few months back, and you all voted on trying to help our small business people about the small We sent a friendly resolution. You said though. something to the state. Yes, sir. Or yes, ma'am. Uh, you never got a reply from the state on that? Actually, we sent a second one, if I'm not mistaken. What because we, I think we sent another one to, because we didn't because, get a reply. Because uh, two more businesses in Oswego two weeks ago went out of business, the Lighthouse and the Irish Pub. Actually, yeah. they made mention of statistics for us to look at that the business 
the, the bar business and the restaurant business went up statewide after the smoking ban. I don't think so. No, I, Rosie, I'm not here to argue. I'm just saying what well, they said back. Mike's writing about that. It wasn't in the paper. Well, right. it, it, again, you can't believe the paper. <laughs> 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 There's nine businesses in Oswego County, nine nine places in Oswego right. County alone, and look at the revenue that, that and, and it's hurting us. It's definitely hurting us, and I heard they were going to try to come up with some sort of air air system that would give relief. Um, I already put that in my bar. Yep, yeah, but I don't know if it's an accepted system yet. I, I think they're trying to change the wording that that is going to be accepted, and from what I understand. But however long, you know how we're, slow government works. But they should give us. Uh, what I requested was give us our choice, our choice of uh, what we want in our business. Well, especially with a situation like you, where you're a one, one room bar with one employee, <laughs> and, and most of the time it's you. Come in <laughs> smoking, and he doesn't don't come in. It, it, it's his choice, my choice. Oh, I. Okay, would you let me know on that, please? I'll, I'll check tomorrow when I at the meeting. I'll ask get on. I'll be breaking out on that too. We're having a caucus before, and I'll bring it up. Yes. Because uh, before I went to my lawyer, and he said that the, the Cabin Association had a lawsuit on it. But I, ho I hope you feel confident that it's not at a local level. There's nothing we can do. No, to but every it. every little bit. It's like I told right. uh, uh, Senator Wright. If everybody, uh, Hillary Clinton, when she was here on the farm, uh, if everybody would just see what's happening. To New York State with the business. Uh, yeah. People. Well, you got Nancy Lorraine going the other way, fighting it. The, Thinks that no smoking inside outside. You know, it, 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 there's two sides to that that argument. Oh, but they spent a lot of money. The, the why don't they just cut the tobacco factories out and, and then don't lose all there. that they, revenue? They, they, okay. they can't afford to lose all that revenue. Okay, just let me know. I'll yeah. check on it for you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you, sir. Yes. You, you don't have a spare copy of the resolution for tomorrow, do you? No, I don't. I just brought one to see what the number okay. was for the. Okay. Try to push that, Mike. I'll, Rose, anything we can do, I'd love to see a change. Okay, I have a report from the dog control officer. Number of complaints, 38. Number of dogs picked up, 3. Number of dogs destroyed or died, none. Number of dogs released, 4. And number of dogs on hand, 1. Uh, we had expenses of $3.50 for ads. Monthly mileage of 316, uh, impoundment fees collected $10, and adoption fees collected $15. Assessor. Oh, it's my turn. Assessor. I've got to change my... Yes. No apostrophe, yes. <laughs> All right, as you know, July was my first month in office, so the majority of that time was spent, and I'll state it here again for everybody. My office hours are Monday mornings from 9 until noon, and Tuesday afternoons from 1 p.m. until 5 p.m. Uh, the main thing we do in July is publish the final role. I did not sign for the final role, as I was not an instrument in the creation of it. The previous assessors did that. I have since entered all the necessary changes and corrections to the final role, file all the required paperwork for the corrections with county orcs and got the necessary signatures from the chairperson of the bar to file those corrections legally. Uh, as far as the office goes, I've spent most of the month familiarizing myself with existing office procedures to try and identify areas where legality, efficiency, and service can all improve. I've been working with existing staff, both uh, Marianne and the codes enforcement officers, to try to streamline the procedures so that we're all aware of what's going on. Uh, if they see something, then I'm aware of it, and vice versa. Uh, been real good about that. I don't think we're going to have to change a whole lot there. Uh, been meeting with property owners, representatives, real estate agent brokers, appraisers, basically anybody who comes through the door. Uh, we do see a pretty good traffic flow most weeks. And, you know, identify issues, solve problems as they come up on an individual basis. And maintaining and replicating the version 4 database and updating software on both the office system and my laptop as needed. Uh, going to Oswego and Syracuse. Sometimes Syracuse to do that. Uh, the main thing for July, I did attend the IAO seminar in Ithaca from July 19th to the 23rd with an examination on the 24th. The IAO designation is from the New York State Assessors Association. It's a professional designation from the Institute of Assessing Officers. 
Uh, it's a very prestigious designation for assessors. It puts you in a very elite group. There are not that. There are two currently in our county. Um, very difficult examination, not an open book test like most state administered exams. Uh, I feel confident that I did pass it. Um, I would still get my credit for the course to meet my continuing education requirement for the year regardless of the outcome of the exam. But I'm pretty confident that when it comes later this month I will be accepted into that group. And for miscellaneous, I was out of the office uh, July 5th for the holiday, and obviously I was out the 19th and 20th while I was in training. Uh, for the month of August, the main thing I'll be doing this month as assessor is administering the reassessment project from the Granby side of the house. Uh, I am in a unique situation as I am the managing partner of the company that's also doing the reveal. Um, but I think that's a good thing for Granby because I'll see the project from every side. There won't be any surprises, and the same people will be administering it here and as far as state and the company is concerned. So we're going to get the best of both worlds. I think it's going to work better for Granby, as it did in Williamstown, where I did it in the past. So basically, that's going to entail uh, approving the finalized new land rates and neighborhood breakout for the town, which I've already done, uh, updating version 4 records as indicated by the most current edit error report. I'm about halfway through that. Clean all sales data in anticipation of creating sales counts for use in sales market approach. That's done. Create documentation for the triannual evaluation or annual update program for publication and approval at ORP. So we still haven't made a determination if we're going to do every three years or every year at this point. We'll probably have to have a meeting at some point in the future to determine what we're going to feel is best for the residents of Granby. And uh, maintain and control of the reassessment project. August is also SCAR and Article 7 filing month. Uh, I did have one uh, SCAR hearing, the prior SCAR hearing, that was August 4th at 11.45. Ed was there with me. We had a good time. Uh, the Perry SCAR hearing is coming up uh, next week on the 19th at 9.30. Pennock Brook LLC filed Article 7 on a vacant piece of land. It's probably going to cost them more to file than he will ever save in taxes on that property. I'm going to try to get with him and see if we can get a settlement out of court before we go. Uh, Oswego Harbor LLC, which is basically another entity of Niagara Mohawk, continues to file Article 7 on the non-sealing railroad. Um, I do caution here on the next page that um, it's probably a good idea to get that settled as quickly as possible. I am involved in litigation with both NIMO and uh, Oswego Harbor in the town of Orwell. If it does linger, it tends to build up and the amount of money you have to pay back grows each year. Um, I will say from experience in dealing with Niagara Mohawk in these lawsuits, you don't win, okay? You flat out don't beat them in court. It's an impossibility in this county. If we're going to have to come to a settlement that's agreeable for Granby and for them, probably more for them uh, on the short term. On the long term, it will balance out because we'll accept state advisories in the future. Uh, but I would like to have that settled for uh, the tentative role for next year. And I'll, I'll meet with Dennis about that as well and see where we can go. Uh, but I'm very familiar with the people involved in that case as well, having dealt with them on several others. So it should be a pretty speedy process once we get everybody to the table. Uh, U.S. Tower continues to file Article 7 on the cell tower on 48, uh, just south of South Granby Road. They're asking for a ridiculously low amount of money. I don't think we can settle where they want to be. I'd like to see income and expenses for the last three years, which I probably won't. The thing that they tend to do is they'll depreciate their tower at just a ridiculous level, but they will never show you the actual income that the tower generates. I don't know, you're probably not familiar with tower rents, but they can be pretty high. Those towers generate a lot of money when they're full of antennas, and they don't want you to see that. They want to, you know, like most people, taxes as low as possible, profits as high as they can be. I don't have a problem with that, but I want them to be assessed fairly, just like everyone else. Uh, that will probably be a while in coming before we settle there. Uh, that's pretty much it for SCAR, Article 7. Uh, I did submit a voucher to be reimbursed for continuing ed, but you will only see that as my report for being reimbursed for mileage, or will actually pay for the class, so that money will go to them. And just uh, as a little blurb here at the end, the transition from three elected assessors to a sole appointed assessor continues to offer new challenges and opportunities to better serve the people of Granby. The transition period went very smoothly, and the people that have provided me with feedback have been very positive. I haven't had any complaints as yet that I'm aware of. Over the next several months, the reassessment project will identify the remainder of the most serious inequities, mistakes, and problem areas within the town. 
As the sole assessor and the managing partner of the company providing the reassessment services, I will have the unique opportunity to see the process from every angle. And the really important thing here is that's going to provide Granby with the best possible results for this revaluation. I continue to meet and greet property owners at every opportunity. Problems continue to arise, and they will, but the ability to address these issues and the time it takes to solve the problems has definitely gotten better, in my opinion. And as always, if anybody has a question, a curiosity, anything at all, don't guess, don't wonder, come and see me, and we'll do everything we can to get it worked out. Okay. All right? Thank you. Can I ask Thank a question, Dave? Please? Certainly. Could you reemphasize just a little bit for a minute on these towers? Because I understood we've had problems in the past. People want to come in and put a tower. The people mm -hmm. in the neighborhood don't like it at all. Yeah. Now, if I heard you correctly from what I was reading before, they want to, they're looking, they've already been there. I'm going to pick an arbitrary number, maybe five years, and they're already looking for a big cut in what they pay for taxes? Yes. They're asking for, I believe, it's between eighty three and 86000 The actual change escapes me. And they're assessed that I believe it's just under two, two hundred thousand. Typically, and again, I could probably basically your towers are about a thousand dollars per linear foot on a on a straight cost method with all in equipment. So a hundred and fifty foot tower is basically by the time you get it set up and acquire the land about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars before antenna income. And th there's the real key. I mean, these the towers generate so much income. And it's not just the towers. I mean, if you drive through the city of Syracuse, you'll see antenna arrays on billboards, on the outsides of buildings, on power line poles, because it does generate a significant... Everybody has a cell phone, so there's a lot of money to be made there. But their depreciation scale is just ridiculous. They want to drop it to 40 or 50% good, which is how you work depreciation, the remaining life, yeah. within okay. the first three years, and it's just it's too yeah, low. Yeah, because I know the people did lights right down the road, the one we're mm -hmm. talking about from where yeah. I live, yeah. The other problem, and Granby is named in that suit as well, but the state will be handling that. Frontier Communications is suing almost every municipality in the state. Uh, but they're doing that through the state advisory. So basically they're suing the state, and the state tends to cave in on these. So we're going to probably lose revenue there in the future as well. well then, again, that will be a countywide. Every municipality that has Frontier equipment on their special franchise will lose money there. Thanks so, for just explaining mm -hmm. that slide a little more. Thank you. Anything else before I go? I want to, uh, if you put your GRG hat on, I want to congratulate you on the meeting that you had a couple of weeks ago. Thank you. I thought it was very useful and you explained things they extremely well, well yeah. in terms of the re reassessment process. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I have a report from the historian um, said I spent a part of June gathering information for my historical project at the Oswego County Fair in Sandy Creek. I put together an informative three-sided poster board which <coughs> remained on display in the Heritage Building for the duration of the fair. I spent a day with other historians discussing their displays. Karen Oakes from Syracuse University is writing her dissertation on one-winged homes in the Granby Center area, and I met with her in July to go over what information I had. I've asked her to supply the town offices, particularly the History Records Department, with a copy of her findings, which she has agreed to do. So that's from uh, Elaine uh, Bullrich, our town historian. Planning board, you've been going to the meetings, I know. Yeah, they got a number of. Uh, they've handled a number of uh, requests, a number of public hearings, with no one coming up the 18th Wednesday night. Okay. Um, I think that's on uh, Mr. Holmes's property. They want to put a business in there, but uh, from what I've seen, all these meetings I've been going to so far since uh, being liaison uh, planning board, been very professional. They very well. I got their okay. seem to have their act together, and uh, they handled. Uh, Everything in a very professional way. Okay. Uh, ZBA? Yeah, yeah, we posted to uh, the hearings last uh, month. And again, this month, the 24th, we'll post. Uh, is it on the 24th or is it? Uh, yeah, it wasn't that. That one get changed because uh, 
I'm using the fourth Tuesday. That was the I know, but I, for some reason I've got on my calendar that it was changed to the following Tuesday, but I, I don't know why. You know. Okay. I could be wrong. I'll look into it. Yeah. All right, thanks. Talked to our youth director yesterday. Did she get a hold of you by any chance, Carol? Mm -hmm. Did you want to report? Anything? She called me the night before they were leaving and uh, wanted to know if I would chaperone. Mm -hmm. And if she had given me a little notice, I okay. would have been able to. Okay. But I did tell her that uh, because I had a bunch of my grandchildren to take care of that day. Mm -hmm. But I said that if she couldn't get anyone, that to call me back and I'd try to make arrangements. So she got someone else to go. They went to the Strong Museum in Rochester. Mm -hmm. And I would have really liked to go. I wish she had got a hold of me sooner. She's, I think she's had some trouble getting in touch with you, but, you know, well, I don't know. not knowing, you know, catching you home. But I talked to her yesterday, and things are going pretty well. Mm -hmm. She did ask, and I think uh, if it would be all right if she rode up some standards for the children's behavior on the buses and so forth and guidelines. And I said, do it. <laughs> you know, sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. It certainly is, is a reasonable thing to do, and it also helps the chaperones too, I right. think. So uh, she wanted to make sure that it was all right. So. Absolutely. It's been pretty good, but she's, you're always going to have a couple of children that are, <coughs> that are unusually difficult. So, but she's worked a lot with parents and, and with some difficult mm -hmm. children, so she knows how to handle these oh, situations. Yeah. The general consensus is the program is going well. Yes, yes, very well. She met with uh, Brian Chetney from the Youth Bureau yesterday. They met here in the conference room for a, uh, just a review of the program, <laughs> evaluation of the program. Mm -hmm. Okay. I apologize for being late. It's all right. Unfortunately, those things happen. And well, these things happen, and... Uh, Lynn is not here tonight because things happen at his house. Right. He had a uh, car run into his house yesterday and do some, some damage. So uh, 200 feet, over 200 feet off the road, too. Unbelievable. I saw it's amazing today. that she <laughs> missed the trees. And this, this, this person, motorcycle, hit the truck. And Andy, I don't think you're going to be a highway superintendent. <laughs> yeah. State road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, no uh, one got hurt today. I mean, no she's one. all right. She we got shook up and hurt because I was talking to Lynn today. And she's in the hospital, so I believe. But really? She's 75 years old. Nobody knows what happened. She don't know herself what happened. How she did all this. She ended up airborne. <laughs> I mean, so it was must have been a frightful thing. But it did do some damage to his house. It pushed it in. The bedroom wall is a little closer to the bed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> To get somebody jacked up and everything. You know? I know he's very busy with uh, the summer uh, road projects. Yeah, they've been paid. They were paving today. Uh -huh. Oh well, well, they were working with the Swigel Town. Yeah. That much I know. Okay. <clears throat> you want to do the code enforcement report. Building permits issued were 27, fees collected $2,489, construction value $260,069, inspections 57, zoning complaints 4, camping uh, over 15 days, building without a permit, uh, garbage and water runoff were uh, what they were. Zoning complaints closed 5, court cases 3, uh, court cases closed 2, junk vehicles removed 7, submitted by Grace Talents, Harold Babcock, and Robert Dalton. Been kind of busy with court. Well. Thank you for uh, your assistance with that office. It's yeah. a busy one. Um, I've submitted my monthly report, supervisor's report, uh, and we are in good shape with all our accounts. Sooner than we know, we'll be starting the whole process of developing next year's budget. So we'll be sending out letters very soon to the uh, various department heads regarding that. Went to a meeting last night of the Lake Neatawana Committee, um, trying to get a joint, uh, 
grant money together, um, or be able to use grant money that uh, has been promised, but they need to have a project well developed. So, uh, Ruth, do you have anything? Monday, we will be issuing the new year of hunting licenses. Ready. Starting at 8 o'clock in the morning. One question on that, if I could, on the, uh, not the hunting, but uh, you went to the meeting on the Lake Nianawana mm -hmm. last night. The grants are looking for, is that to dredge the lake? Or, um? No. The grant that the Envision, using the money, I can't remember, it's just under $500,000. It's a federal grant. Uh, and it would provide money to farmers to within the Sheldon Creek watershed to make Improvements so that there would be less pollutants going into the water. Understand. Getting to the lake from there. Okay. That's that's the main use of the money. Uh, dredging gets into millions and millions of dollars, and there are people that are still pushing that. And it'd be nice, but you know, that's that's awfully big money. Yeah. So. Uh, Okay, let's have a motion to pay the bills. I'll make the motion to pay the bills. I gotta read the whole thing, right? Yeah. Motion to approve payment of town bills is audited for it by for abstract 081, claim 654 to 707 in the amounts of $11,135.78 from general fund. $42,785.73 from Highway Fund, and $80.49 from Willabab Lighting District. I'll second it. Okay. Please call the roll. Councilor Edwards? Yes. Councilor Greco? Yes. Supervisor Hawthorne? Yes. Councilor Haggerty? Yes. Councilor Abbott? Yes. Okay. We have our work meeting scheduled for the 25th. We'll be working on a comprehensive plan. Um, the regular meeting is scheduled for September 8th, and I'm hoping to schedule a meeting with uh, a special executive session to discuss highway contract next week, if we can get something together. I'm just, I guess I'll next have to week. give you a call. Does that work for you, by I'm any out. chance? I'm out. Oh, okay. Well, we need to do one, at least one meeting in, in August, because time is flying. Well, works for me. Maybe we'll get one meeting and get it off the ground. And, uh, it will take more than one, I'm sure. What day are you thinking next week? Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday, Thursday. I don't think I'd have it. I think I'm available Tuesday. I don't know. Okay. That's a possibility. So I'm working on that one. We really need to get that set up. Anyone have comments or questions or no. come forward? First of all, I'd like to say that when you sit up there and you're talking, we can't hear you. I'm sorry. I... Well, another thing, you seem to carry on your conversations amongst yourselves and we don't hear you because you get lower and lower and lower. Now, we like to hear it. You know, it's That's uh, why we have the microphones. I thought it was picking it up better. I, I didn't think I had to yell, and I guess I... Well, you can hear me, and I don't use the microphone. So. Well, your voice is much stronger. You're sure you hear me, too, us, don't you? No. You, didn't you, get lower, no. you get lower and lower and uh -huh. lower, and you mumble, and you put your face down. Okay. Well, well, there's no, nothing no, intentional in that whole thing. It's I hear Carol, because her voice carries into the microphone. Um, and David, David goes along okay, and then he gets lower and lower and lower. So, you know, with that in mind, and, and I'm sure that there's people out here that don't hear anything, and I hear some of it, and I don't hear well. So, I have a question about um, the sewer district on 48. What's going on with that? I talked to the uh, engineer the other day, and uh, he's waiting for our approval from DEC. He has the design done. Um, he has to get an okay from DEC. 
That's how we get all that. Not that. He said okay. he had to finish his design and then he got had to send that design to DEC. Oh, he has to have the plans approved. Yes. Okay. So oh. we have the easements done. That's good. Uh, I don't know if the school has approved them yet, but our side of it's done. So it's going along. I don't know. I'd have it done tomorrow if I could. You know that. Okay, well, um, Mr. Castellanos sent another letter and, and wanted to know what was going on with it. Well, I, why don't you have him call me because uh, I would like to talk to him. I'd like to get him and his neighbors together <laughs> because we'd like to form a district so that they can uh, work in them. Well, he says here, he says, in May of 2004, I talked to Don in Senator Wright's office in regards to the slow process uh, this sewer project is taking. He called me into Hawthorne's office and was informed everything was set. All they had to do was wait for Granby School summer vacation. Then they could cut through the road and also cut a tree down. And that was in the, the, the tree that was in the way. Um, school vacation is almost over, and I'm still waiting. Well, maybe I should have asked Mrs. Hawthorne what he should she have come was in and talked to me. To, um, what year she was referring? We're to. talking to, you know, third-hand information here. So, have him come in and talk to me. I would like to have him and his neighbors come in very soon and. Uh, get his part of it. See, he's, there's confusion because the, actually the grant has nothing to do with his hooking onto the sewer district. Mm -hmm. But we should have had a meeting with those people. Well, we will. No, we, we wanted to be ready for the meeting. So we, and I talked to Mr. Gumini. Remember, I, I said, I know, should, when I'm I was still going there, to do it. You should have called a meeting with them then. Well, we weren't ready. We didn't have the no numbers. numbers. Exactly. Oh, thank you. But I talked to Mr. Guminiak the other day about that. Sure. And uh, we're going to, we're talking early September to get the people together. It's kind of tough to read. We get it. Okay. Um, code enforcement. Um, David called me this morning. I came down this morning, David. Um, it's got to be me. It can't be, uh, everyone can't be having problems in this town with holding for us. They have had a few of these. But we need a set of rules. We need, when you buy your building permit, um, if there's something that the that the homeowner or the contractor should know, it should be in writing. We should issue a paper along with it on, on uh, who the inspectors are. I assumed when I came in here that the inspector was the town inspector. I didn't yeah. have any idea. It had been years since I installed a septic system in this town. And in, in the meantime, I've talked to the um, the health department in Oswego, and they told me uh, that the town code enforcement officers have the authority to inspect ordinary systems, 300 foot systems that are ordinary. They, they, the the um, the uh, architect draws up the plans or, or writes up the plans, tells you the perk test, tells you it's got to have 300 foot. Um, there's no raise bed or anything, then they can go right ahead and do it. Uh, and the code enforcement officer in the town can inspect that. Um, Mr. Badcock has showed me uh, some paper from the state that says that whoever draws the, uh, the plan has to do the inspection. Well, here's the, here's the trip. Mr. Getman doesn't draw a plan. Mr. Getman does the PERT test, writes it up, and anyone that can read his his writing, his, his, uh, the way he writes it, it's the it's legal uh, it's a legal design. He, he just tells you what the what the perk test is, how many feet it needs. Um, it says uh, 
I believe this will provide enough information to obtain um, approximate pricing for your contractor. Plans approved by the Swigel County Department of Health should be prepared. However, this requirement is at the discretion of the local enforcement officer. If you have any questions concerning the test results, uh, need plans, or have questions concerning your septic design, please write or call our office. Well, I called Oswego, and they said a normal 300-foot, 1,000-gallon system, there no, the health department doesn't require plans on. Therefore, this system, that's what the system came under. I brought this per test in, and I handed it to your code enforcement officer. And he said, fine, you're all set. And the building permit was handed to the homeowner. Nowhere on here does it say that Russell Getman has to inspect his system. On the building permit, it says that the code enforcement officer inspects the plumbing. And I believe it says septic tool, I'm not sure. But it, it doesn't matter. You, you, you think that you're dealing with the right entity. And I also sent a fax to this office saying that I was installing the, the tank, installing the system this week. And no one called me. No one sent me a, a letter. Uh, matter of fact, any letters I've sent here, only one. You sent me a letter back once and returned my uh, uh, reply to me, Nancy. But um, I installed the system. Mr. Getman... The, um, the code enforcement officer won't issue the occupancy permit because he says the, the Mr. Getman had to inspect it. Mr. Getman won't inspect it. It's covered up. He can't inspect it because the code enforcement officer, I assumed, was the guy that was going to do it. Um, I don't think we have a problem here. Um, I'll guarantee the system. I don't have a problem with that. But we need to get this stuff in writing so that everyone knows what page they're on. I, I do believe that our core, I think Brace Talents has its head up. I think Brace Talents is, uh, uh, he tries to keep everything straight. But he's only here part time. He's only here in the evenings. And I don't think he gets all the information. Um, I think there's information comes in that gets set to one side. Um, I just, uh, these people need their occupancy permit. They need it for their, uh, their uh, last draw from the bank. <coughs> and the bank wants that. Oh, I, we talked with the lady this morning. She's not ready for her occupancy. She doesn't want it. We called her this morning. She's nowhere near ready for it. She said she's still got a lot of work to do. So she's not ready for occupancy certificate. We talked to her this morning. Well, this lady's called me several times telling me that, that this system was holding up their occupancy permit. It's not holding it up at all. As a matter of fact, she said she doesn't need it. We're on the phone with her this morning. She said she's nowhere near ready. She's still got a lot of work to do inside yet. I talked to, I talked to Harold Babcock this morning, and he told me that he'd made all his final inspections. And, she, and the house is not ready for for occupancy, right from the lady this morning, after you talk with Ms. with Harold, we followed up on it afterwards. Not ready. I just so I, I would suggest that you maybe stop in tomorrow, or I'm not sure when Harold's going to be here again. But I would like to I would like to have you and myself and Harold and the other guy sit down, and if you got some of these complaints that you want to get straightened out, maybe we should meet during the day in here and the afternoon sometime when you're free, and. Uh, we can talk to the, I read or talk to these guys when they're here. I've been sitting here and talked to about them tonight, and right. we're not going to get nothing resolved here. I just soon have you and myself and them sit down. We can, maybe there's a misunderstanding here someplace as far as communications, or if there's something lacking, then, you know, certainly we want to take and make it better. That's for sure. But um, we well, talked I to assumed, the lady. She's not ready. I assumed this morning when you called me and you said to come down here, they wanted to meet with me. I assume we'd get a result this morning. I thought maybe you'd be here this morning. Unfortunately, I had to work. Well, a lot of us do. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have enough information to resolve it yourself. I think it's an in-house problem. I don't think it has anything to do with me. 
Well, I would just like to take and just have you get a I few, few moments and just well to have your comments. That particular situation has been been taken care of, but we need to make sure you. We need idea. to make sure you're happy. You and have some if ideas a, of how this process affects you, and maybe I just want to make sure there's not a personality conflict. I want to make sure that we're doing right for everybody, and that when everybody comes in for something, that they get all the same information. And I just want to make sure there's not personality conflicts involved here. And the best way to do that is for us to sit down and, and uh, take a half hour or so and, and just go over it. I know you're a busy man, um, but if you could make some time with me, I'll set the meeting up and, and uh, we'll get a result. There could, there could very well be a personality conflict. Bill Hughes called me this afternoon. He said, what's this baloney? i got to have a, a building permit to put new plywood on my roof. I said, I, I don't know. I have any idea. I went over to see him. They were taking the, the shingles off his roof. The roof was rotten. He was at work. He had a contractor there doing it. Uh, he said, do you know anything about this building? I said, no. I said, I, I don't do roofs. I, I wouldn't think that there would be a building permit on a roof. I don't know anything about the particular incident you're talking about. Well, I well, refer that to them. He's got a personality conflict, too, mm -hmm. because Mr. Babcock stopped down there personally, and he told the, the contractor that tomorrow he has to come in here get a building permit in order to continue on that house. You know, in, it's kind of all right uh, if it's correct, um, but I think that our building inspectors should be prepared to back up what they're saying. I think there should be a rule book or a code book to show this contractor that, that this is actual, factual. I believe we have those books they, in the yeah, office in here. we have the State Fire and Building Code yeah. Uniform that's what, Code. That's what, that's what they, they go they by. Use. Well, then they should be taking it with them. That's why they need to well, come down here to the office if they got the complaint, so we can sit down in here and go over it and, and show them where it says it. Or if it doesn't say it, then, you know, we need to make that issue the right issue. Absolutely. I think yeah. there's a distinction between, there may be a distinction between reshingling a roof and rebuilding the roof. And maybe that's why he felt that it had to have a permit. I don't I thought, think I, I thought the law said I thought the law said if you're replacing your roof, there's no permit. But if you add a different pitch, that could be too. I, I don't know. I just I'm not trained the law in that. that. We have if you add a different pitch to your roof, a different by uh, adding just your roof, uh, I don't think there's anything. In right I don't here. know. And, and a lot of times you want to remember too that when people get phone calls or they get um, they get. I say, I'll, and I'm not, um, I'll just say, we'll say Harold, for instance. Somebody calls him up and says, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, and Harold will give him an off the wall answer based on what he's hearing at the other end. Sometimes the information that comes across the table, unless you got it in black and white, you know, isn't really always factual from the other end either. So we need to be fair both ways and, and come in and sit down, show them what you want. Um, yep, this is what it is, and, and here's the code, and this is what, this is the way it's going to be enforced. But, Sometimes I, phone I calls agree. aren't just aren't just for some phone calls are sometimes People frustrating don't if you don't communicate the right properly. Then why doesn't the town, when somebody calls and instead of Harold giving off the cuff answers, why doesn't he say, I can't discuss this over the phone until you come in and sit down and tell me, draw me a picture, bring me in a picture of exactly what that's, you're doing? That's, that's usually what we do. Does. That's usually what we do. That's the main word. Well, he doesn't have to do that all the time. Yep. So far I've heard, David, correct me if I'm wrong, so far I've heard, come in and, come in and sit down and talk it over. Um, we give facts over the phone, but usually we don't. But if somebody, sometimes you're right and sometimes you're wrong. Um, the way the, I, the, way I, the I, codes I, department operates is on paperwork. You come in, fill out the paperwork, fill out the application. And, and then if you have to go before the planning board, then you go that way. If they can do it in the office in here, they do it in here. But they want it in black and white. That's the way it's supposed to run. And, this, and whatever, that, whatever, that, uh, whatever that building permit says is what, what they inspect. I'm not a code enforcement guy. I don't know. Whatever they, whatever they, it's on that. I'm not, you're not going to get me into that. Nice try. <laughs> no, no, no. I've already, I've already went, I've already went from, we all, we all, um, uh, the right we all thing don't to understand do. over the phone the same thing. The right thing to do, Les, is come in and talk to them. Face-to-face -face communications. That's the right way to do it. 
I brought Getman's perk test in and laid it on their, t on their desk. Mm -hmm. I don't think I can get any straighter than that. Well, you also told me, and so did Cheryl, that they, were, they couldn't move into their house because they needed this occupancy. And she told us this morning that so there's, we're not always getting all the straight information. No, no, they wouldn't move in. They won't move in until they get the occupancy. But I'm telling you they what don't he need told it. me. They don't need it. What he's telling They're me. They're not ready for it. And she's not, not ready for it because it won't. It, it will not pass. She's not. She's got more work to do. She's not ready for it yet. She told Harold not to come. Yeah. That's what she's said. not ready for I, it. I will be on the phone. So you need to talk to her tonight because I'll tell Jim what Lisa said. Yeah. And he can call down and personally. I'll give him your number and he can personally call you and talk to you. But go back to Bill Hughes. Harold Babcock showed up down there to turn around and shut him down for repairing his roof and putting new shingles on. Why didn't Mr. Babcock have his book with him to show that contractor the rules? I do not know that. Why don't you ask Mr. Babcock? Because you're his boss. I'm not his boss. Come on, we, this is getting carried guys. away here. We've had more. But well, we're just satisfied. Where do we, where, where and do the we, best way to resolve it is to come in here. Satisfaction. I mean, you're collecting our tax dollars, you're representing us. Where else do we vent our dissatisfaction? You can vent it here. You Thank just you. did. But yeah. uh, what we're telling you is come into the office where we can sit down and go over it and show you either what's right, what's wrong. Dude, That's all we're several asking. Several times to you about this. Yeah. Several times. And if I, got I, have not, I have not received a letter, I sent faxes. I've sent letters. And, uh, and tell me what I and, and tell me what I haven't done, Les. Pardon me? Tell me what I haven't done. You've talked to me a couple of times on it. I've called you back, I followed up on it like you asked me to. And what we're being told is that she does not want the occupancy certificate because I'm she's not ready tonight. for it. Well, I'm back. I'm so back. I haven't I'm done nothing. I haven't I haven't not I'm done anything. That from you. I haven't hmm? heard that. I'm hearing the other side. You understand what I'm saying? But I haven't not done anything. I mean, you're, you're sitting here saying that you've talked to me several times and nothing's getting done. And I don't think that's a, I think that's a cheap shot. No, it isn't. We haven't had a meeting. Have we had a meeting? No. Okay. I came to your meeting today. You said mm -hmm. the code enforcement officer wants to meet with you. I was there. Okay. I went in. Bad tax going. I don't understand this. We got, we got a, a, a we got a, a, a building permit by somebody named so-and-so and one by the name of Bailey, and it's all on the same thing. I don't understand it. Uh, uh, I don't know what's going on. Uh, so we went back to square one, and we explained it to him again. But because you mm -hmm. came in, it is getting resolved. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy? Yes. What I... I'm not anything involved in this, except I'm confused listening to everybody. If Harold Babcock or whoever is part of the coding, and they go out to shut down a job, shouldn't it be part of their thing to take a code book with them so that they know what they're talking about? I don't know. As I recall, these code books are not... what do you mean you don't know? May I finish? I have yeah. seen the code book, and as I recall, it is a very big, bulky thing. It's not something you stick in your pocket when you go out for an inspection. Or, you know, or maybe he's just driving down the road for another purpose or something and sees something like this. Yep. So I don't know that that's really necessarily a practical... I have a question. They also handle more than one case at a time. Right. Who needs from uh, who needs uh, um, um, what is it to move in? Occupancy. Uh, who needs it? I uh, I was fighting for a half acre land up there, and I had still have a clipping from Grace. A house that was built on a half acre land did not need occupancy. Did not need this. Did not need that. What do you do? Pick and choose? And you know, it was the Arno property. And I still have the clipping where Bray says, no, they did not have an occupancy. They did not need one. So how do you pick and choose 
I, you know, we went through this and went through this, and I know I don't, you know, I would have to really go back and get the facts again. You should have your rules. You should have I think they're doing a pretty good job. It's not perfect. Absolutely not. I think it stinks. But they're doing a whole lot better than... I don't think you're doing a very good job. You're out of order. Yes, you're right. I, I allowed you to speak far beyond your three minutes. I allowed you to vent. You did your Nancy. venting. For $11,000, I get three minutes. Nancy, yes. uh, up on, uh, up on uh, Joe Martino's thing that people lived in there, no taxes, or they just moved in without and a brand new house, the Miller family. They lived there, what, three, two or three years without it being on a tax roll? Nobody occupancy. And, and now you're going back to when I no, first I came here. The code enforcer was across the road on Joe Latino's ass every minute, but yet there's a family across the road living in a house without occupancy, without being on the tax roll. This is our code enforcer, Grace Tenants. Now, don't, don't I, I could write you a book about that one. Now, this is where you people have to uh, just say, you either have your, your rules or you don't. We have more rules now than when I came here, and that's the situation you talked about was back in 1998. And now you're comparing it with now. Well, now we do have more rules. And it's not a discrimination thing because it's a whole different situation with different people and, and new rules. Grace is not different. Grace has been here with me. He had nothing to do with assessment. Well, I'm talking about occupancy. I don't know about the occupancy on that. Miller's lived in that house for two years. I have no without idea. Occupancy without assessment. And, and Grace didn't come here until 1998 or 1999. We had this outfit from Portland who came up one day a week. Now you think things were bad. Nancy, I don't want to go round and round with you. I, I mean, it's a I, whole I was, different situation. I was situation. here at the time, and so was Brace. They took Joe into court, and Joe into court, and Joe into court. And right across the road from Joe is this house, brand new on the water, that wasn't assessed. Mr. Miller. You're talking a, a whole different time no, frame. No, And a whole they different got people. An occupancy. They never. I don't know about his occupancy. No. I remember the they item that... He on a tax roll. I remember that. But that was 1998. Oh. We didn't even hire Brace until 1998 or 99. I guess What's what Brace has to do with that? Changed. You just got to have. They have saying. changed a lot. I don't think so. I don't really yeah. think so. I don't okay, think Cheryl. Yeah, this is me because I'm just going to finish what this three minutes I can. Here's a letter for you. A letter for you. A letter for you. A letter for you. A letter for you, David. And here, give this to Bryce. This is just going back to Mr. and Mrs. Bailey's piece of property. My biggest problem is, is that Les did fax your code enforcer, your building inspector. He faxed them two faxes. They cannot pick up a telephone. They could not because on the top of my faxes is this heading with my fax number included. They couldn't even fax us back or take and make a simple drive out to tell us that Mr. Gatman needed to inspect it. They knew it. They were informed. Now, you need to straighten out. Okay, we're working on this. No, you're not. Okay. They're worthless. They have been worthless. Go out to Mr. to the Finney Road. They are now worthless. Oh. To Mr. Bailey's property. You will see his little building permit. And if you see one X or one mark on that building permit where they have inspected anything, then I will apologize. They but until that point, no, I won't. Because I know several pieces of property that they have not been to and inspected anything. Huh. They haven't been seen there. Now, don't tell me they're doing their job and they're, they're trying. They're not trying. Brace may be, but not the other one. Who's the other and one? And I don't, Mr. Babcock. No, who, I mean, what's the other property that's not getting inspected? Uh, I'm not sure exactly which one, but I know that I've talked to a few people, and I don't write down their names. When do you find I out, let me know. I haven't seen them, but from now on, I will start writing down every name. 
They do not necessarily check those off on the permit itself, but if you go in their office, you, they will have a record of who has been inspected and where, what their status is. I know and if because they I, don't inform the contractor and they don't keep in touch with the contractor, why should the contractor have to catch up with Harold, Brace, or Dalton to make sure everything's been checked? If they don't check that, sign. it is up to the contractor or the homeowner to notify the code's office when an inspection is due. We do, but if we they can't. don't say that, wait a minute, if they do not say, well, we inspected it, yes it is, if they do not mark their building permit that it has been inspected and when they were there, then how would, we have to go chasing after them to find out because they're not here all the time. Now, exactly, you're supposed to check that. That's what it's for. If you have to put up a building permit with all these little things on it and it's supposed to be checked, to what's good of, what is it going for? To notify you of what inspections are required. You as a contractor or you as a homeowner. I've got two, two of these in the last year. It's not practical for them to necessarily check them off on the permit. But if I want to know whether they've been there, I'll give them a call. You know. A lot of times when you call, they're not here. Well, we get back to you. What's the, uh, what's the check marks? don't get back. What's the check marks do on the, what's the, what the inspection marks do on the, on the building for that is it assures the homeowner that they have inspected that and they check it off. That gives the homeowner a record that, that they inspected their seller and it was checked off. That's what it does is give the homeowner a record. That's just like the letters that I sent to the, the building inspectors or I send to you. I don't ever receive answers. No one puts anything in writing. Is there a reason for that? Yeah, because then you can sit there and you can spin right around in a circle and change your minds and change things. That was 98, it has nothing to do with now. It works good. When someone writes you a letter or faxes you a letter, you should have the courtesy to fax back okay, check out on such and such a time. Or, I am looking into it on the Route 48 uh, 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 sewer project, and I will let you know on oncoming things. And it's, I called you. I called you. Yeah, you did. I called you that same day instead of waiting to the next day. Yep. Did you want to write a letter also? I, you know, I mean, you're beating things to death here. I, I think there are problems. Now you're making it sound, now you're making it sound like the, uh, 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 like I'm, uh, like I'm issuing you because you called me. If you'd have sent the letter, there would be, there would be no problem. I thought it was better to talk to you directly. I'm sorry. Well, send the letter next time. I like it better okay. because then you can't spend it around like you do right now. You told me on the phone to call you, and I called you. And the only thing I did different, I didn't call you the next day. I called you that same hour. You called me right back. Yes, you did. Yes. You said at this time, right now at this time, you're. They're working on it. Right I answered now. yes. And, and, and that, that's great. And, and I told you that that uh, that uh, even if they get it done, the architect said it's going to take two more months before he gets his end done. And you told us last February or March that we were all we were waiting for was the school system to shut down so that we could cut the road and put the sewer in. Am I wrong? I'm not sure that I said that's all we were waiting all for. I, I do not know all the steps in this, and there are steps have come up that I didn't know were even involved. All I knew was they could not do it. There's two ways of saying this. They could not do it before school let out, or they didn't want to do it before school let out. Okay. Okay. One more thing. David, Mr. Spaulding, it's been almost a month. I think he's had 30 days. I haven't seen the first vehicle. The only thing he's done is mow his, mow his grass around him. Hasn't moved the first one. So our, our, our building inspector and code enforcers are doing their job? I will follow up on that. Okay. Anyone else? See, yes. The building inspectors, like we use as an example this roof thing that this contractor was shut down. They got this great big huge book that isn't um, practical to carry with them. All right, so they know they're going out on a roof problem. Why don't they take the roof pages out of the book, make copies of them, 
so that they can say to the contractor, here's our roof pages, and it says such and such. For 10 cents or a nickel a copy? In this, in this situation, I, it was kind of my understanding that he didn't get a phone call that there was a roof problem. He saw someone working on a roof and knew they didn't have a permit. All right. But why would he, he was stop there, driving by, he sees a man putting a roof on, so he automatically shuts know. him down and he doesn't know what he's talking about? Usually they come back to the office, they give the usually, person. But Nancy, usually, I don't even know what this situation is all about. But what I'm saying is you can't go usually. You can't shut down a job if you don't know what you're talking about. Whether it's a roof, a sewer, a garage, a new floor. They have a procedure. And, and I wish you would get the procedure from them directly because I don't want to say the wrong word. Um, they ask the people to come in the office and get the permit before they proceed with the work. But if they don't, don't come in the permit. office, then there's a big sign goes up and it's, it's a, a but formal. But you don't need a permit, like say for well, a new permit. I don't know. I we don't we know, don't know if they need situation. a permit or not. Well, neither, neither do we, but well, that's why know. I say if you come in the office, we'll find out. Well, you're not, certainly not going to resolve I it here. Don't think, I don't think there's a, 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 a rule that says if you pitch your roof different. They must be I, doing something different. I that's all know. I can say. You know, I, we shouldn't be talking third not, party. It makes no sense at all. Nancy, I, I bet my place on it. But if you put I know I, ed, if, on dormers or something, you need That's to correct. Put, but doing the same roof over, if, if, if they yes, say change the plywood, maybe, maybe that's it. I don't know. I, I guess I like to know, why is it so hard for people yes, to come in the office? Frank, don't they like it? I would recognize Frank Fox. You don't get any worse in the office. I would recognize Frank Fox. I am sorry. I, <laughs> I don't want to speak over you. My understanding goes back quite a while, was that if it's a structural change to a building, and you need a building permit, okay? If you're putting a new roof on and, and they're tearing up the shingles off and they see a rotted plywood and it doesn't change the structure, they can put a ply, piece of plywood on. Now, if you stop them from doing that and it rains, mm -hmm. this homeowner's gonna turn around and sue you. Mm -hmm. I, I, no, really, I, I, and I don't wanna be paying money and taxes to you or to your attorneys to do lawsuits. So I think it's imperative that you get, you people are the governing body of, of, of the town. And, and if, if you can't straighten out the building people, then who can? And to people that vent their frustrations here, I guess it's, it's a matter of communication problems. Here. A lot of it is communication. And, and I think that you better straighten out your other department and, and find out what's going on. We have to find out there's a problem first. Well, Sitting here right now, I can't tell you. I don't know there's a problem. Uh, I have no idea. All I'm doing, I'm just hearing what you've got to say. I want to hear the rest of the he story. Said, she yeah. said, he said, she said, I, Until I talk to the coast them, people, I'm not taking you know, you know, If he's if he shutting down just because someone's putting plywood on a roof, the roof. They're not going to shut it down just for uh, simple reasons. And, there's got to be a reason. That, that, you know, you check it out and see. We'll check it out tomorrow. Find out what the situation is. I don't think you need a permit to replace the roof. That, that's, no. that's ridiculous. We don't know what what the case is all about. They so once we find out, we'll find out. I, don't I see think a lot that. of heads and that in the ass is that if it's a structural change, if you're putting a new porch on, or you're putting an addition on, yeah, or you're putting know, that's something, that, that, then, then you need a permit. If you're putting a, fixing a roof from the snow damage last year, and you just... You're doing it, you got to put some plywood underneath to fix a, a broken truss or something. Uh, there's no building permit needed for You're that. Getting right in a little more of a gray area, I wouldn't want to comment on it. Tomorrow we'll get the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think the public should be aware of what's going on because if they're not, then you're going to have a problem with somebody fixing their roof. And the building inspectors come in and say you can't put a new roof on until you get a building. Well, if you want to come in the office tomorrow, we'll, and we'll find out. One thing that I have said to our code enforcement people is please be consistent and please go by the state code. That's, That's right. That's all we can do. Sometimes there's miscommunication.
We will find out. What uh, sometimes there's mistakes, but um, this that's is Mr. All I can say. This is Mr. Hughes. Is that what it? Where's, what's the address on it? Oru three. Oru three. Yeah. I'll be talking with him tomorrow. Okay. And I really appreciate your assistance because I know that Dave has put a lot of time into improving that office. I'm sorry? Right down the road from me on the same side. This roof deal you're talking about? Right down the road from you? Right down. It's where St. Andrews was. St. Andrews Okay. Great. Anything? Anyone else? Yeah, I want to get something out. Okay. Okay, back to the sewer on Route 48. December 10th, uh, from James Wright. Dear Mrs. Castellano, Thank you for writing my office regarding the problem that you and your neighbors are, have had since 98, getting connected to the existing sewer line. I have just received confirmation that an agreement between the town of Grandy Fulton School District and the city of Fulton has been finalized. The project, the project to connect you and your neighbors to the existing line should now move ahead, and I am pleased to contribute to this worthwhile project. James Wright. December 17th. Dear Mr. Castellano, as I promised, I am writing to bring you up to date regarding the town's purchase of the school district sewer line. The two attorneys prepared a written agreement which was formally accepted by the town last week. The school district last Saturday, and which was and, and the school district last Saturday, and which was approved by the city last night. This was the key milestone that had to be reached, and I'm thrilled to report a success. Our attorney has been keeping Senator Wright and the Silicon County Health Department informed as to our progress and will continue to do so. We intend to move forward as quickly as possible, including the legal work required to expand this district to your side of the road. I only hope that the four or five property owners just south of you will be anxious to cooperate as you are. Nancy Hawthorne. And that was December 17, 2003. Right. Now, in February you said that we were, once again I'll say it, you said that we were going to do this project when school shut down. Well, I was, I was unrealistic on my expectations. I, that's all I can say. I didn't know that some of these things were going to take as long as they, they take. Okay. Nice. I really didn't. I I've not that. been through this. I didn't know that it was going to, you know, well, run into a situation with, well, we can't do it now because there's snow on it or we can't, and we've got to get an under, uh, written okay about the trees. There's more than one tree. You know, who, who owns the trees? And, you know, everything takes longer than you expect it to. Well, and I regret it. If there's anything that I would like to get done, and you ought to believe this, this has been the biggest thorn in my side for six years. And if it could get done yesterday, I'd love it. If we have to buy <laughs> pumps down there, it's going to be a god darn waste of money. I know it. Well, you so, know that. That's why I don't sleep nights. No, we got it. If we can possibly get that going. Well, we're no. doing as fast, like I said, I've talked to the attorney this okay. week, I talked to our engineer this week. Thank you. And I, you know. Anyone else? I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.